<laughs> Welcome back to Hawaii Real, everybody. I'm your host, Eel Ke'ehu, and I want to send a shout out to our beverage host, Hawaiian Springs Water. You can buy Hawaiian Springs Water from Amazon. I'll put the link in the description below. And did you know it's alkaline water? Do you like this water? I do. I do. Straight from the Big Island. They put it right into the bottle from, from the mountain. Like, they don't filter it or add anything to it. I was just like, wow, shocked. Pure. I love it. Pure and alkaline to help with all the acid from the plate lunches and stuff that we like <laughs> to eat. I like to eat french fries. But I have an awesome guest with me today, Lori Goez. Thank, Thank you so you. much for coming on. Thank you, Eo. Thank you for having me. Yeah, no. Uh, you are running. I am running for. Kapolei. Yes, for Hawaii State House of Representative for District 42, which comprises of Kapolei, part of the Kapolei Villages, East Kapolei, as well as Eva Villages. Oh, wow. Yes. Interesting. And so this podcast is kind of going to center around who you are. Thank you. And, well, thank and a you. little bit of why. Hey, why should you vote for Lori Koi? So, if you're a Kapolei side person, West Side, represent. Um, yeah, you're gonna want to listen to this one. All right, here we go. Lori Goez, where are you from? I am from born and raised here in Hawaii. I actually it was raised in the countryside, Kahuku. Um, so plantation, plantation village. And, and so that's why I was so excited when they drew the lines, the re reapportionment and Eva villages joined our district. I was like, those are my people, you know, coming from, um, Kuhuku and a plantation village. So I was very excited to have Eva villages join our district, but I was raised out in Kuhuku. I graduated from Kahuku High in elementary school. Oh, Red Raiders. Red Raiders for life. Yes, yes. Pride of the North Shore. Absolutely. And from there, so you uh, grad Kahuku, and uh, before you go any further, you're a doctor. Yes, I am. Yes. Okay. I'm a proud graduate of our public school system. Mm -hmm. And I, I know people, when they hear me, they're like, you know, when I came back and graduated from college, went into went back to my alma mater, taught at Kahuku, and they were like, Miss, you speak funny. And I'm like, no, you're speaking pigeon. I'm speaking proper English, mm. you know, but just having that, you know, that awareness of, wow, you know, they're born and raised in Hawaii, we we do speak pigeon, right? And it is a recognized official language, pigeon, um, but we also need to know when to turn it on and turn it off. Right. Yeah. Right. So. Yes. Yeah, there's there's kind of, uh, I don't know if there's controversy, but there is, you know, if you speak pigeon uh, growing up into adulthood and going into the workforce, that is definitely going to affect your performance. Sure. You know, it's going to affect how people see you, uh, perceive you, and judge you. And people are going to judge you whether we want them or not. Yes. You know, it's, it's just the fact. Right, right. But I graduated from high school, went, went away for college. Um, and that was just something, you know, I, I'm a third generation educator, so it was no choice. You're going to school, you're going to, you know, college and grateful for that, um, that push and, and direction that my grandmother, um, set for us. So followed my sister to college, um, came back. What school did you go to? I went to Eastern Oregon University. Mm -hmm. Um, and then I went to Boise State University, came back, um, was working, and I believe the state was under the Felix um, Waihe consent decree, the Felix consent decree. Um, and so they offered master's program for free um, if you went into special education. And of course, I took, took advantage of that, got my master's there, and then um, eventually got my doctorate in exceptionalities. So I'm a strong advocate of students with disabilities. What is exceptionalities? It's the first time I've heard that. Yeah. So, um, it's really a range of, of working with, um, individuals with disabilities. So, and, and which also includes, um, the, the range of exceptionalities. So, um, individuals with disabilities as well as gifted and talented. 
All right. All right. So you're doctorate in that. Yes. Okay. Do you always want people to call you doctor? No. Okay. <laughs> As a matter of fact, I, I don't. I, I prefer people to just call me Lori. Mm. So even working in the Department of Education, um, you know, it's it's out of, I guess, respect. People will say Dr. Goez. Sure. Um, but I always tell people, please call me Lori. Yes, please call me Lori. <laughs> Except, you know, it's it's... It, it's I, I throw out the lorry when you know people th- you know pull the high maka maka card right and then I have to use it. I'm like okay <laughs> let me let me use my dog. <laughs> Do you have a story behind that? Um, you know not not necessarily, but it, it's just a a vibe that people give off. You know, um, and so I always remain humble. My 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 grandparents uh, have taught taught us you know that it doesn't matter what your title is. At the end of the day, we're all human beings. My grandfather was um, a groundskeeper at Turtle Bay. And so you ask for a story, and I, I'm when I was actually working in on the neighbor island, um, went in, and I was commuting back and forth, and one of my colleagues had told me, you know, you shouldn't be – having lunch with the secretaries Mm. and yeah and I thought that was weird and um of course you know I'm like you've got the wrong person because my grandparents you know we come from humble beginnings and so what did I do I continued having lunch with (laughs) with the secretaries and became great friends and um you know truly at the end of the day we're all human beings it doesn't matter what your title is Right. Did you stay friends with the person that told you not to have lunch with those people? No. Okay. <laughs> no. <laughs> not at all. <laughs> that is that is bad. Yes. Really bad. Yeah. You know, I always try to get my kids to just be good human beings. And, right. you know, titles, position, hey, at the end of the day, put your pants on one leg at a time just like everybody else. Absolutely. Yes. Yes. Do you watch, uh, listen to like Elon Musk when he has like his TikToks and speeches and TED Talks and stuff like that? He has- I- Yes, I've, I've seen some of them, yeah. There was one where he was talking about CEOs and all these titles mean nothing. Like mm-hmm. at the end of the day, what is a chief executive officer? What is a chief financial? What, what is all of, all of this? It's just a title. Like at the end of the day, you're just, are you in charge? Are you the manager? Mm-hmm. Are you the boss? Are your people loyal to you? That kind of thing. I was just like, wow, yeah. Great way to look at the world. Right, like, right. It's absolutely. just titles. Exactly. It's like who's the person behind the title? Yes. It's more important. So call me Lori. Lori. <laughs> right on. How long have you lived in Kapolei? We, um, it would be 22 years. So Scott and I, we got married and was, you know, young family looking for affordable housing. And um, we found Kapolei. And it was, you know, we, we love everything about it. It is, it was exactly what we were looking for. You've got, you know, shopping centers, you've got a loon farms, agriculture. And again, we're from country, so trying to find that balance of everything. And and truly, we have um, great parks, um, activities for the kids. And so we we truly, you know, enjoyed raising our kids there. Yeah. What do you love most about Kapolei? I, I love the community. I love the community. We, we've certainly expanded. When we first moved in, it was the villages of Kapolei. And so I, you know, I served um, as president of the board I, and was on the board for six years. Um, but it's really a community, that old school community of pulling together, watching, you know, each other's families, uh, I'm the auntie at the park that, hey, if I see your, if I hear your son swearing, I'm going to be the auntie to say, hey, watch your language, <laughs> nice. right? And and so I love that. I love that, you know, that community is definitely, um, it, it, you feel that, a part of couple A. Yes. It's still kind of small townish, but yes. not too small. Yes, exactly. Yeah, yeah. no, I love couple A, so... Um, I, I would play hockey out at the Kapolei rinks, the Kapolei inline hockey arena out uh-huh. there. So just driving by like weekly, you know, to and from, 
you get to see, because I'm a townie, I live in town. And before that, growing up, I lived in Milani. So Capole was kind of just, it looks just better structured. Yeah. Street wise, build wise, like better organized than what you see driving through town and these old neighborhoods sure. and stuff like that. Yes. You know, so I was always impressed with, with that kind of thing. Very nice. Beautiful neighborhood. And, you know, um, it's safe. Um, I remember, you know, the kids sending them, send, sending them off to school and, you know, not thinking twice of sending them riding their bikes to school and, and returning home and you don't even think twice about it. So that's huge. It I, is. I don't let my kids and I have two boys, 14 and 12, and they don't really know how to ride bikes that well because they can't ride bikes around our neighborhood. It's right. Just, it's clearly not. I wouldn't even ride bikes around my neighborhood. Oh gosh. Yeah. Uh, Safety is important, yes, for sure. Yeah, I love the. It would have been nice to have a old school, nice, cool neighborhood that they could grow up in. But yeah, worked in town. They went to school in town, so <laughs> got to live and work. Yeah, you didn't have to deal with the traffic. That's fine. Yeah. All right, let's get to know you a little bit. Sure. Do do do. Do you have a favorite quote that you'd like to live by? Oh gosh. My favorite quote of all times would come from um, Oliver Wendell Holmes. I find the great thing in this world is not where you stand, but in what direction you're headed. And so I, I love that quote. Um, it, is, it is on my refrigerator. It's on my website. Um, but working with students with disabilities, I came across that quote a long time ago. And, and I really felt, um, you know, it doesn't matter where you're at in life, whether you're dealing with a disability, whatever the case may be, um, it's what direction you're headed. Because we all are going to find ourselves in a funk at one time or the other, or in situations that, that you know, are not ideal. But it, it truly is, you know, what direction are you headed? And I think that um, that quote serves as an encouragement, as a reminder that we're not stuck. You know, it's a tragedy when people think that we're stuck and there is no out. Um, so I find that quote very encouraging. So, I mean, that quote kind of blends in with like the growth mindset. Yes. Do you feel like you have a growth mindset? Absolutely. Absolutely. As an educator, um, you know, we we talk about the growth mindset and, and that we all, and it, especially, you know, in my field, my line of work and working with individuals with disabilities, um, you know, the, the limits that we put on ourselves are really, are the only limits that we, we should recognize. Um, and and I, I think that, you know, we all have p great potential. The, the human spirit itself, right, is, is just, um, we have so many examples of overcoming. And, and I've seen it firsthand. I've seen it in my students. I've seen it, you know, um, within myself. Um, you know, I was born and raised um, in a single family household. Um, and see, seeing, you know, seeing just the domestic violence in a household, um, alcoholism, and, and I, you know, my message really is it, it, it's your, your, your current situation. Um, and when I speak to young females, especially is don't let, you know, your current situation define your future. You know, there's so much more. So, um, so yeah, I, I love that quote. Yeah, no, I mean, that's the first time I've heard that quote, but it's so relevant. Yes. And it's universal. You know, it's. Yeah, absolutely. Move forward. Just keep moving forward. Okay. The past is behind you. <laughs> like, you aren't who you were. You yes. are who you are and you're going to be who you're going to be. So your your past doesn't have to define you. It's today that defines you and tomorrow is who you're going to be kind of thing. Yes. Good that stuff. direction. Yes. Good yeah. stuff. Good stuff. Makes you think. But I, I've met so many people that 
read that, hear that, and then they just fall back into their own little roles and little boxes, mm -hmm. um, you know, limitations and stuff like that. And it's just like only you can get out of it. Like I can tell you yeah. and advise you, but yeah, you got to get out of your own box. Oh my gosh. Yes. Yes. Life is hard. It can be hard. Life is hard. Like don't make it harder on yourself. Like geez. Yes. So many people. Okay, so this question, this next question, um, is there a historical figure that you'd like to have lunch with? Ooh, you know, um, I have been, I, I kind of boycotted social media, like, I think maybe two, three years ago. And because of running, you know, of course, you got to get in, right, and yep. do all these things. So I um, resumed my accounts or opened um, campaign accounts and and in January, we we did a post on Queen Lilio Kalani. And of course, you know, I'm an educator, so I want to just, you know, really understand what we're posting. And, and so did some research on her and was just floored and just admired um, her and her her generosity, her love for the people. Um, and, but more importantly, her, her quest and her, her pursuit of knowledge, right? She says, Oni pa'a, um, be steadfast in seeking knowledge. And, and I, I love that about her, you know, and I would love to sit and talk with her and, and just, just know, you know, just what's her manao on, what's happening now and what happened really what happened you know we hear all these things and but truly you know from the reigning queen the last right of the Hawaiian kingdom um really what she went through what really happened and you know how do we what what her her advice would be for us today so yeah i would love to have lunch with her <laughs> <laughs> follow-up question what modern food would you introduce her to? Oh my gosh. <laughs> you know, um, I'm thinking like Zippy's chili. <laughs> no. So we were talking about this and my, you know, my favorite local food has to be in Hilo. Have you ever Verna's? No. Oh my gosh. Eel. Verna's has this smoked meat plate lunch. I love smoked meat. Wow. Smoked meat. It's just the, it's cooked just perfection. That sweet, crispy with glazed onions. Oh my gosh. So that is my favorite. I would definitely take her to Verna's. No, you know, my husband, I've even tried to replicate it. it can't come close to it. So Verna's. Crack cocaine they're putting in. No, I'm just kidding. I'm kidding. <laughs> Yeah. That's what we always say when this is like food that's just like ridiculously yes. uh, good. A little bit of that, right? Yes. Yeah. It's like, oh my God, what do they put in this? <laughs> oh, it's MSG. It's like, oh, wow. I love MSG now. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, yeah, we found a smoked meat um, sandwich place. It's not a place, it's like a group of families that were just selling them on the side of the road in Waimanalo, uh -huh. right by uh, Waimanalo Beach Park, just on the weekends. And they're just selling, you know, smoked meat sandwiches so we stopped over there and met them and they're really cool people and it's big for nine dollars huge sandwich full of smoked meat onions cheese butter melting all over the thing i was just like oh my god this is so so delicious oh my gosh boy if you're ever in hilo go check it out hilo Furnace. Furnace. Mm -hmm. smoked meat gonna check it out all right yeah i love smoked meat me too i can never be a vegetarian sorry vegetarian <laughs> listeners can't do it sorry Love my beats. Okay. Uh, do you have a favorite movie? Like a movie that you can just watch over and over and again? Oh, boy. You know, I every time I get asked that question, beaches come to mind. Hmm. It's an old flick. It's a chick flick. Um, but I there was something about that movie that just, um, you know, just resonated with me. Um and maybe I'm just a girl's girl. You know, I value my my sisterhood and friendship. And um, But beaches, yeah. 
Bette Midler? Bette Midler, yes. Yeah. Okay, you know now that. you got to karaoke the uh, song a little bit. Oh, gosh, At no. At least the chorus. Oh, gosh, no. How about you? Did you ever know that you're my hero? Very nice. I'm not even going to try. Oh, no. Leave me hanging. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> That one line, you are the wind beneath my wings. Yes. Like, classic. Like, it makes me think after being like a cr- content creator and stuff like that. It's like, how did they come up with that? those words to define that? Oh, yeah. Absolutely. It's so deep and meaningful, yeah. right? Yeah. It was perfect for the movie. Yes. And, uh, you know, it, it resonates with a lot of people. It should be like, I don't know if they can ever redo that movie. Maybe not. But they should definitely re-release it. It's a good quality flick. It is. But I don't think, you know, scrolling through Netflix and all those things, I don't think I've seen it. I, I don't either. Because trust me, I've searched. <laughs> yeah, not that I would land on it. Because, I mean, I look for some of these old 80s movies and stuff like that. Because I, I, you know, growing up in the 80s, I, uh-huh. I like some of those old movies. Oh, yeah. Like Ferris Bueller's Day Off. Like, I, I can't find it. Three Amigos, another one. Can't find it. It's like, that's like, I want, it, I want my kids to see that show. It's so freaking hilarious. Great but, shows in the 80s. Yes. And yeah, they hit they hit the nail in the head on a lot of things with movies. Beaches being one of them. American classic, Beaches. Yes. Yes. All right. Uh, okay. So I was going to ask you a favorite local food, but I think Verna's with the smoked meat. Do you have another one? Verna's, you know, my go-to, my go-to is always chicken katsu. Oh, I know. Favorite. You cannot go wrong with chicken katsu. Yeah. Mac salad and rice. But is there like a favorite chicken katsu place? Because all chicken katsu is not equal. No. Some people like fry it too long and it's hard. Yes. I don't like hard katsu. I like Japanese style where it's like thick and soft and moist. Yes. Can yes. I say moist? Moist. <laughs> yeah. Do you have a favorite katsu place though? Um. Oh my gosh. Ram- ramen bones? actually serve some really good chicken katsu very moist and and that just comes to mind just because we were just there um over the weekend but but i i know what you mean when it's overcooked not good not good yeah because it like curls up and it's like a little brown and it's like yeah 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 i don't know what it's like eating it's like eating rust <laughs> And the sauce itself makes a difference too. Oh, yes. Yes. And I don't like restaurants when they give you like just a tiny bit of katsu sauce. I'm like, no, dude, give me a give me a gallon of that. Just don't drown my stuff in that. <laughs> That's right. Because we went to uh, Japan and over there you can have the tonkatsu and they just give you a ton of sauce. You just drown your nice. katsu in, in that nice. awesome katsu sauce. One place I want to go, Japan, for sure. That's on our bucket list. We haven't been. Yeah. It's good. Hopefully they open up soon. Yes. So, yeah. Really good. Get the tourists back over here, money back in the state. I don't know. It's kind of weird not seeing Japanese tourists all over the place, but it's kind of gotten, I don't know. I did that part out. <laughs> all right. And so to get into more of um, your campaign and running, uh, why – did you choose to run? So you retired from education mm-hmm. and were you just bored? Like, yeah. What was the reason you decided to run? You know, um, I, a number of factors came into, it came into play when, um, I decided to run and, and I did, um, after retirement, I actually was interested in creating and replicating literacy hubs um, abroad um, and had planned on going to Myanmar to check out, you know, the literacy hubs there and wanting to replicate that in in the Philippines. Well, COVID hit and so our plans in March um, was canceled. And so like many other residents, you know, we were locked down and, and I think for, for the the year and a half, I was, you know, keeping busy, but really pressing in and asking, you know, and, and praying about, you know, is this it, you know, after retirement, you know, what's next? And, and, you know, we've been blessed 
And Scott and I have been, you know, we're, we're actually going back and forth um, to Vegas. We have a second home there. And, but yet conflicted because we would hear how our families were laid off. Um, there was controversy on being vaxxed or not vaxxed and, and just observing Hawaii hurting. And there was just a growing division among, across the state. And I, I remember this day, like it was yesterday, um, where one of my friends had sent me a video and I had watched it. I was sitting on the floor and, um, and it had to, it was related to the vaccination and, um, and I remember so clearly, you know, um, God asking me, you know, will you run for office? And at that moment, you know, I, I knelt, I mean, I was on the ground already, but I knelt and, and really prayed like, if this is what you want of me, then make a way, show me the way. Right. Um, went downstairs and told Scott, I said, I think God wants me to run for office. And, and he was like, who am I to question God? You know? And, and that was, that was last May. And so since then, you know, I, I, I know that Hawaii is beckoning for leaders to with integrity, leaders that will put people first before politics, before um, political parties. And, and they were, we're really wanting po policies and legislation that support Hawaii's hardworking families and that will protect them. Um, you know, and, and I don't really have all the answers. I, I tell people I'm not a politician, I'm not an economist, but I, you know, I value community and I'm an educator and I, I'm a mom. Um, and I'll do my best in researching policies that will protect and serve the people. Yeah. And, and from, you know, my point of view, looking at all that I've seen from you so far, it's like, okay, you're not only an educator, but you're an educator in special education and special needs, but you've also got your doctorate. So if any of the constituents or voters are looking at you, it's like, okay, you started going through college, master's degree, you started and finished a master's degree, you started and finished a doctorate degree. So it shows that you can start and finish, you know, and that you are a hard worker. Like that's clearly evident. You're a doctor, but it also shows patience. The field that you chose to go in is not something that's necessarily easy. And I'm sure there's going to be a whole lot of listening and figuring out and problem solving that goes into all of that and finding, I'm sure all these students, I'm um, just hypothetical here is like all every student there has their own issues their own differences mm -hmm. and the way you educate them is going to be different with each individual person more so than you know just a standard classroom where you just have 30 kids in one classroom trying to teach them the same way so that shows me that you have all these problem solving abilities and you know hopefully a way to see things outside the box solutions and work together with people yes Thank you. Is that you in a box? In, in a me nutshell? in a box, yes. Okay, okay. Yes. Yeah. It's like Austin Powers. Like, no, this is me in a nutshell. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm terrible with that. Uh, Austin Powers is a good one. Yeah, I would. <laughs> that's another good one. Now, that's me how I get from, I go off on tangents really badly. So we could be talking about special needs education. The next thing <laughs> we're talking about, Austin Powers. It's like... <laughs> Squirrel. Squirrel. <laughs> um, do you have any, rec or do you recognize any uh, specific challenges uh, for residents here, either in Kapolei or Hawaii in general, mm -hmm. that, you know, you moving into politics, and if you do get elected into this office, that you're going to be able to uh, affect change in? Mm -hmm. You know, there's many, many issues that Hawaii faces, um, and coming out of the pandemic, um, Certainly, you know, revitalizing our economy is is um, forefront and one of our in many of our issues. 
Um, one of the things, you know, that we keep talking about is diversifying our economy. Um, however, it, strengthening our economy is going to take much more than diversification. It really is addressing um, bottom line, those barriers that keep our residents from fully participating in the economy, in the workforce. And so, you know, I, I've spoken to people as we canvass and, um, you know, access to affordable child care is, is huge. Mm -hmm. The average cost of child care is $700 um, a month. Um, and that's just the average, and it depends on where you go and who you have. Um, that number easily can, you know, exceed a thousand. So, um, help, help, helping, helping our residents, you know, through these barriers. Transportation is another one. Um, you know, if we can allow, it, you know, one of, you know, my proposals I would love to see is. Um, zero fare trans, um, transit for our students and individual workers to come and go. And we know that three quarters of bus riders are low income riders. So, you know, if we can lower the cost of living um, for, for our families, those are some things that, you know, we need to pursue. And, you know, I, I again, I'm not an economist or, you know, but I'm a problem solver. Um, and it's just common sense, common sense solutions for to support Hawaii's hardworking families. And we need to start looking at long term, sustainable solutions, you know, giving, giving um, these, these checks, you know, surplus checks to Hawaii's residents is fine. But Perhaps we should invest in a little, you know, sustainable solutions. Does the rail come into play in your running? Um, you know, you know, I see the rail all the time as you know, North South Road. People have asked me about the rail. It the the rail we have, um, you know, smart streets or. Um, street smarts, um, that, that, you know, biking to work, those programs, they're not going to solve our traffic situation. And I'm so grateful that I don't have to deal with, you know, two hours of traffic going, you know, one hour going, one hour coming back. It is exhausting and it wears on people. Um, the, the rail is not the answer. Um, you know, we need to incentivize businesses for, to, for remote work, um, and and that has been proven in the past two years that it can be done. So um, incentivizing b businesses to allow their workers to work from home, uh, but the but the rail is you know really not the answer to our traffic solutions. I I, I remember when the rail first came out, and and I was thinking you know. Gosh, people, should, we should, we should have, you know, they should have asked the people because culturally that's not how, we, you know, we just don't take the rail to work and come back. We'd like to, you know, go, go to work, maybe stop at Long's, maybe stop at auntie's house. Right. And so it's not just a one, you know, A to B. Um, culturally, that's just not our way of, you know, commuting. So, yeah. Yeah, but now, you know, it is there, so. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, it's there. Yeah, so it being there, does it come into play? Like it, because they're talking about just finishing off at Middle Street? Is that what they're talking about? Yes, yes. You know, so being from Kapolei and Eva Beach, or of Villages, do you guys want to see it go further into town where people who may use it can mm -hmm. utilize it further into town? Or is it just like a non-issue anymore? You know, um, Interestingly, I, I, I don't want to, you know, I never want to say it's a non-issue because I'm sure it, people will take some, you know, um, to some residents, but Kapolei is, um, the second city. And so what, what I'd like to concentrate on is, um, pr providing more opportunities for work in a community, in our community for our residents so that they don't have to take the, the rail and take that commute. 
lately, and I mean, I'm sure it's been like this for years, but I, you know, from just passing through Kapolei as as I come and go, yeah, I start to see more homeless people just setting up shop here and there in Kapolei. Is that an issue that is going to be brought up uh, for you during this campaign? And is it something that can be resolved? Yeah, um, y- you probably know, EO, that um, I am involved in the homeless outreach. So I, you know, go out um, usually twi- twice a month with um, the homeless outreach, whether it's through Inspire Church or the Croc Center. Um, we go out every every weekend. Um, they 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 alternate weekends, but um, in Kapolei. We, we see the regulars, the regular homeless. Um, the Department of Housing and Urban Development, I, I believe the latest um, the latest statistics was in 2020, and I think they um, estimated or came out with statistics about 6,000, a little over 6,000 people homeless here in Hawaii. I know last month they were, they were actually taking a new count um, there isn't any indication that the homeless population has increased. Um, however, you know, it, it in couple A, it, it does appear a little more evident um, a, as we go out. Um, and I'm not sure, you know, just the reasoning. Um, I, I believe the, what was it, the... Um, Downtown cell was closed. Oh yeah. So, oh, yeah. so for, the for H- a period, H- the of HPD t- central receiving was closed down. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. So for a period of time, you know, we would see a lot of uh, an influx um, mm. coming out of the station, um, and then of course, right across the police station is our park, our regional park, and so a lot of homeless we would you know visit would be there. I would ask you know. Hey, you know, have you been here? You know, how long have you been here? Oh, just, you know, just this weekend. Um, I, I'm usually in town. Y- you know, it, it's it's tough. It, it's tough going out and seeing these families. What I'm, I, what I'm most concerned about is the the youth, the you know, unaccompanied youth that we see out that are homeless and for for whatever reason and. And again, we talked about, you know, gosh, getting help for them and realizing that there's so much more ahead of them than their current situation. So, and I know HPD, you know, the Honu Project has been incredible with, you know, supplementing the state's efforts in tackling homelessness. So I appreciate HPD. Yeah. And from a resident's point of view, it's like, I don't have solutions either. You know, there's... There's homeless people that are just down on their luck and mm-hmm. lost a job and, you know, they're now homeless. Maybe their families and stuff like that. Yeah. And they're just look they're just working class people that are looking for a place to live. And then you have other homeless people who are, you know, maybe drug addicts, mm-hmm. alcohol um, addicts, you know, that just are choosing to be that or they they can't fit into any other residence. So they kinda get kicked out and so they get pushed out. And then you have other ones who are just mentally ill, you yes. know, and right. It's like, what do we do with them? There's there's different problems. Like you can't. There's not one sweeping solution. Like building more housing is not going to solve the issue, right? Because you have these people that, yeah, it's going to solve the issue for some, but it's not going to solve the entire issue, you know. And I'm I'm glad you recognize, you know, and you brought up that some of them are hardworking mm-hmm. individuals, you know. Um, I recall um, one lady in Wahiwa, and she, she cleans houses every day. And she she gets up and goes, you know, catches the bus to clean houses, um, and just can't afford. But is she getting up? Is she working? Absolutely. Um, just the other weekend, we ran um, we ran across. Um, a young man who was trying to get his identification and all he had was a a copy of his expired driver's license was trying to get it renewed because he needed that to get a job 
Um, and the system just would not recognize, you know, a need for this. And he was, he was like, you know, if the cops, if I, if the cops find me, you know, they'll certainly recognize who I am. I am not sure why the Department of Transportation can't, you know, accept this and renew this for me. So our system definitely, you know, is a barrier in itself in helping these, these individuals advance. Yeah, no, that's a great point you brought up where it's almost, it's more important to identify who you are in order for you to travel interstate than it is for you to identify who you are to get employment (laughs) and drive. You know, a driver's license is meant to allow you to drive. It's not meant to be your nationwide identification system service that you can travel to any state and stuff like that. Like that was, that's not the purpose of it. Yeah. You know, but now to get your driver's license renewed, you have to show like all, you have to have like a bill for like a services <laughs> and stuff like that to show you live where you live. It's like, what, what business is that of yours state <laughs> to department of transportation, department of motor vehicles. That's not right. really your business. Yeah. Like your department of motor vehicles. I shouldn't have to show you my passport and my birth certificate and all this other stuff that I didn't need when I actually took the driver's test when I was 15. Like all these years I've been who I am. Like why all of a sudden now do I need to prove my residence? Right. Like, right. I, I don't like that system. I, I, yes. I know it's a nationwide thing to get on board, but ugh, yuck. Definitely not supportive for sure. Yeah. And you're right. It, 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 you know, I think that has bigger impact on, you know, less fortunate people getting a driver's license, state ID or whatever to continue to, to get different jobs, to go to work. For sure. For sure. You know, what, what do you put on your application for a rental? You know, oh, you want these people off the street and into a a rental unit. Okay. Well, he's got to get a job. He's got to be able to rent. Oh, but he can't get an ID because he doesn't have any of his, you know, personal identifiers it's like come on yeah yeah okay they're stuck in the rock and a hard place exactly exactly i don't know maybe there's solutions for that that's your job though (laughs) not mine (laughs) i just make videos (laughs) um and i think one of the other issues is the cost of housing here in honolulu especially Mm -hmm. you know where it's just it's the cost of housing, inflation, and now the cost of gas just spiraling out of control to yes. a point where, yeah, no, we as regular residents are going to be priced out, if not today, definitely tomorrow. Absolutely. In, in the past two two months, I believe inflation here in Hawaii, 2.5, nationwide, eight, eight, eight over 8%. percent um, extremely difficult and a hardship for everyday people. Um, you know, two, we have three kids, two of the kids are on the mainland. Um, they cannot afford to be here. Absolutely not. Um, both, both college graduates, um, our, our baby is in college, but, you know, we have this conversation all the time with them. Um, they just cannot afford, you know, and these are college graduates. Um, will they be able to afford in, in the future? I, you know, that's a tough one. And it's unfortunate. It's, it's very unfortunate. I, you know, and, and the, I think many families are, are facing, you know, Real estate is great. Should we should we sell and pack up and you know and and move away? Um, trust me, we've had that conversation. You know, we can we can definitely make um, a pretty penny selling our home, but Hawaii is just you know we we need to we need to fight for for our our rightful place here. Um, I'm not willing to give that up. And, and I, you know, I'm hoping that we can really make a change in, in looking at, you know, how, how we use our land. Um, I, I know, you know, 
it, we're, we're going to have to be creative and innovative and, and looking at how we rezone our land use. Um, I was speaking to a developer out in the North shore and he was saying he was interested in, um, you know, developing affordable homes, um, was requesting these agricultural lands that obviously was just coral, you know, and not farmable. And I was like, well, that, that sounds strange. You know, why wouldn't they rezone it and, and, you know, be open to that if it's unfarmable? Um, so, so we really need to press and, and, you know, investigate, you know, what, what are we doing, you know, and be open. Hey, it's going to take everyone coming together and, and, uh, and coming up with these solutions. Um, let's see. Do you have a life philosophy that you, you know, to, to kind of close out here? I kind of like to ask this question of most of my guests. Uh -huh. Do you have a life philosophy that you live by? I know we talked about the quote early on, but is there something that you kind of pass down to your children as a life philosophy? You know, I always say too much is given, much is expected. And, and I know, you know, I, I've been incredibly blessed. I, and I, and I tell my kids mm -hmm. all the time, you know, get up, get up in the morning and think, you know, think of three things that you're grateful for. Um, and I, you know, it, it truly is at the end of the day when we're given just, just the gift of the breath of life, you know, we, we are blessed. We are blessed. And it's, what are we doing with that? Right. Um, and I know I've been given much, so I'm expected, you know, much is expected of me. I am retired and, you know, certainly our initial conversations of retirement was, you know, sipping some, some cocktail in the, in the sun. And, but, but there's so much more that we can give back to Hawaii and, it, you know, it certainly, you know, in, in our future. And I, I certainly want to give back more. So, yes. So awesome. Do you have anything else you want to bring up to the table before we close out? No, thank you. Thank you so much for having me. I really appreciate it. Uh, you know, and, um, and this has been great. This is my first podcast. So I'm so excited. And <laughs> probably so, won't be your last. Oh you go my goodness. Office, yeah. Very excited. And thank you for being so gracious, you know, with your editing. <laughs> <laughs> Well, thank you so much for coming on. It's been great getting to know you. Yes. Uh, wish you all the best of luck in running a campaign. I know it's not easy. I know it's stressful and it's work, work, work. Um, I have seen other, you know, campaigns going through over the years and just see how much time and effort gets put into these things just yes. to get into office. And then the work really right. starts after that. So, yes. Kudos to you for trying. You know, before we end, and you're probably going to have to just be like, my gosh, she's the worst. I'm having to edit everything. <laughs> One of the things I did want to bring up, Eo, was, you know, um, you know, I share I'm, I'm not a politician. Um, and this has been a learning experience. It's new. But, you know, with, with the recent news on ethics with legislators and, um, you know, I, I really want to change the way we do government, the way we do um, politics here. And so I, I, uh, I think a month, month and a half ago, I actually decided not to take any campaign funds from unions or large corporations. And I think that, you know, as individuals, as leaders, we need to set the example. We need to, you know, make those bold um, decisions and, and say, Hey, listen, government is for the people of the people by the people. And it shouldn't, you know, all the other stuff should not have that influence over, you know, our government. So, so I'm, I'm, you know, I, I'm proud of that. And, and I'm hoping that that is, that sends a message to people that we can do this, you know, grassroots and, and let's get back to basics. Yeah. 
a lot of sign waving and door to door. Yes. Yeah. Canvassing. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Good walking shoes. Oh my gosh. The, the other day I did, made the mistake cause it was hot and I put on my slippers and I was like, Oh no, this is not good. This is not good. You know, feet on the for and we can walk like two hours, you yeah. know, two hours a, a day at least. So yeah, got some blisters. That's okay. Hey, it's impressive though. <laughs> Best of luck to you. All right. Thank you so much. All right. And thank you so much. It. Yes. Uh, and as always, stay happy, Hoy.